Turning your King James Bible to the book of Genesis, chapter 6, I want to talk to you today about every imagination of their evil hearts. I changed up the word order a little bit there from how it reads here in the Bible. We'll go over the scripture. But uh, it's something that I think is very significant. Um, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 through 7. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, much like today, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Go to Matthew chapter 24. See, that was back in the past. Quit living in the past. Well, let's check about that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, New Testament Greek word for Noah. In other words, Noah is Noe in Greek. Greek coming into English, I'm saying. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. These people knew not. They didn't understand. The, every imagination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. I can imagine things and I can feel it in my heart. It feels like the right thing to do. I really feel strong about this. I think, it's, I think this would be a good thing. And it's only evil continually. They sear their conscience. They destroy any kind of a rational thing there. And they say, well, it hasn't been done before. We should probably try it. You see, when the devil used popular media and the indoctrination system of the schools to get rid of God and bring the Bible into just, a, oh, it's just a book with contradictions and whatever else. And he did that through the seminaries and through the church buildings, organized religion. All of a sudden now, people aren't left, there's no more God there, so they're left with what? Their own thoughts confirmed by their own heart. A lot of people have thoughts and they say, that might be a good idea. Well, no, wait, no, that wouldn't work. It doesn't go from here down to there in their heart. Okay? Um, but when you have it go here and it goes down to the heart, now all of a sudden, I think that this is really good and I'm willing to dedicate my life to this. I'll give you a couple of examples um, of the evil imaginations. How about new versions of the scripture? Hey, you know what? This Bible isn't any good anymore. This old King James Bible, the translation uh, way that they did the translation, if I can say it that way, we're trying to find the very best manuscripts. We're trying to produce the very best translation of those manuscripts. You have to understand um, the different meanings of Hebrew and Greek words. How do we properly translate this into English? Let's do our very best. Let's take years to do this. Let's assemble the very best minds that are in England. Seven years to produce this Bible here. The greatest book that's ever showed up on this earth is the King James Bible. Historic, documented fact. No Bible has gone into as many printings. No Bible has gone into as many countries and changed as many lives as this King James Bible. Don't even talk to me about it. And the devil said, I'm going to come out with 200 plus new versions since then. You don't need to update the English language that much. And they come out and they say, I think it should be better this way. Well, I think that we should take out the singular pronouns and put in plural pronouns. And, and you know, we can, uh, what are your pronouns and all this other stuff. That thing was going on back in the early 2000s with the new international version, by the way. The TNIV came out today's new international version. And they were talking about pronouns back then. So don't tell me, oh, it's the woke culture and it's all this other stuff. It was going on in the churches long before it hit mainstream. All right. The seminaries and everything else, they were coming out with this thing of saying, don't call me she, I should be called they or something else. Singular, you know, plural things or all this weird stuff. It happened in the churches first before it hit mainstream culture. How about uh, contemporary Christian music? And modern church uh, <clears throat> worship. 
Is that an evil imagination? Yes, it is. How do you know? Because they keep pushing the envelope. They keep coming out with more and more things and just, oh, come on, we're just, it's artistic expression and whatever else. And they just keep pushing it further and further out and making it more evil as time goes by. Hey, you know, used to be, hey, you come into the church here, you dress up appropriately. Don't dress in sexually promiscuous, or not promiscuous, but sexual um, filthy ways, risque type of clothing. Now, well, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, <laughs> mini skirts, tight pants, whatever else you want to do, low cut tops, it's all church attire. Yeah, and CCM, we have to win the world with the world's music. We can't expect to rock of ages and, you know, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> Onward, Christian soldiers. Hymns like that. Let's bury those. Let's put those in the archives and bury them. We need to have new music to reach the new generation. It's an evil imagination. And how do you know? Because it comes up here. It's a good plan. We can make this happen. And then they say, oh, I feel so good with it. Oh, closing their eyes in the church. It's all about feelings. Sexual perversion. Number three, another evil imagination. Uh, again, it starts out up here, goes down here to the heart. Oh, I don't think I'm normal. I think that I, you know, actually could love this other guy or something like that. Well, you can't have children. Oh, oh, but we love each other. Huh? Two women. Oh, we love each other too. Oh, I think I'm going to be, actually become a woman so that I can uh, be a... Uh, interested in other women or something or I could stay as a guy and be interested in other women and have children and be normal you see what I'm saying it's an evil imagination and it just gets worse with time and again all three all three things I've mentioned so far new versions of scripture CCM uh, and the modern church worship and then the uh, sexual perversion they've all gotten worse they get more extreme. The new versions, oh, we'll start out and we'll come out with the NAS or the RV, revised version of 1881, and then we'll go to the American Standard Version, and then the new revised, or the revised Standard Version, and then the new American Standard Version, and then the new International Version, and then the new King James Version. And you see, it gets worse. And now you have, they're saying, we should just have artificial intelligence rewrite the whole Bible, make it factually more accurate. Uh, okay. Oh, you mean take things out that offend you? Yeah, that's what it actually means. See, perversion always gets worse, whatever form it comes in. How about number four, artificial intelligence? I mean, does it ever occur to these devils like Elon Musk and some of these others? Maybe you've gone a little bit too far. Maybe there's a limit there. You ought to just kind of say, hey, you know, I don't think we should have, you know, artificial intelligence getting into everything. Oh, you know, they're going to have this Terminator movie future or something where it's robots going around controlling people or something. Oh, we just can't stop it. You can easily stop it. Shut the stupid thing off. Say, you know, hey, I don't think we should have this algorithm stuff on YouTube or whatever else. Maybe we shouldn't have artificial intelligence getting into the comments and deleting what it thinks it should be deleted or so. You can stop it. But you see, you can't because that would be going against progress. We just have to let this thing go. And it's a runaway freight train headed for the bridge that's out going into the valley. And, you know, why don't you stop it? Well, then we wouldn't be able to find out what happens when it crashes. That's brilliant. How about smartphones? Is that an evil imagination? These children going around there, you know, in Utah, I did the video. They're, they're trying to ban the King James Bible. And, uh, but you can have a smartphone. <laughs> uh, okay. You can look up any evil thing that you want with a smartphone. You're not going to get it out of this. This Bible tells about sinners. But uh, how about the sinners that you can get through a smartphone being hooked up to the filth of the internet? But that's okay. We don't want our kids to be scarred by an old black book. But uh, give them an iPhone and that's okay. That won't scar them. That's right, there are child predators that are on there looking for little children to go and meet them in the park and whatever else. And you have, you know, trafficking of little children and whatever else that's going on. But we, you're protecting them from the Bible, so that's good. Let them have a smartphone so that they can be taken advantage of by an adult. But, you know, just uh, keep them away from that Bible. Yeah, that's smart. 
How about genetic manipulation of plants and animals? GMOs and all this other stuff. Genetic, genetically modified organisms. Uh, let's do that. Is there some point in time when you can kind of say, you know, we probably should stop doing that. I don't think it's a good idea anymore. You know, you get bees that are necessary for life on Earth, and they get near these GMO fields that have the Roundup, you know, engineered into the thing, glyphosate uh, engineered into the plant, and the bees go near the plant and they die and things. And then they say, oh, we're having a problem in the area. There's no bees to pollinate anything. And, and you know, uh, a couple years ago, there was a situation where there was a whole shipment of bees brought to this airport, and the wicked people that were trying to get the, you know, cargo off the airplane just left the bees out there in the sunlight, you know, just, uh, Oh, we just lost a few million bees. Huh? Oh, well, is it insured? Are you insured? Um, are you assured that you're going to even have a future if all the bees are dead? I mean, that should scare some people. Maybe, you know, there should be some laws against Monsanto and whatever. Oh, that's right there. You can't pass laws against big corporations like that. that now that they're tied in with, Bayer, Bayer Pharmaceutical and everything else. You know, let's not pass laws against that. We'll just kind of see how the train wrecks again. You remember? Let's not put the brakes on. We just, we have to see, you know, and this will be entertaining to see and everybody can stand there with their smartphones and watch as the train crashes. Well, I got it on video. Hopefully it'll go viral on my Facebook page. <laughs> or Meta, excuse me. You know, how about war creation? How about the the military industrial complex. Is that an evil imagination? Mm -hmm. Let's use people. Let's use lives of men, young men. Send them into battles and don't allow them to win. Let's control the outcome of the war so we can have, let's use these people as pawns in our game. Let's send them out and subject, subject them to Agent Orange. Uh, and all the other defoliants that they used in Vietnam. There was a lot more than just Agent Orange. Uh, let's subject them to that. Let's subject them to uh, depleted uranium. Let's use nuclear waste as ammunition in war. Being done in Ukraine, I believe, right now. Uh, is that an evil imagination? Uh, I think so. How about uh, Big Pharma? Is that an evil imagination? I mean, this video is going to really get <laughs> shadow banned. Whatever, I'm shadow banned. So, um, <clears throat> how about Big Pharma? Is there any kind of evil imaginations there? Mm -hmm. uh, possible eugenics stuff going on there. Let's uh, let's put a bunch of toxic chemicals together and tell people that it will cure them. Yeah, that's smart. Uh, we'll make you sick so that you don't get sick. Uh, yeah, okay. There's an asymptomatic disease out there that we don't want you to have. Uh, we don't want you to get, so we'll make you sick so that you don't get the disease that produces no symptoms. Yeah. How about Hollywood, Hollywood and the music industry? Is that an evil imagination? Slightly. Uh, let's see what kind of filth we can put over on the screen and see how badly we can mess up the youth of the next generation. All these kids going around dressed horribly, using the F word, every other word. Where did they get it from? Hollywood and the music industry. It's an evil imagination. How about government indoctrination through the uh, schools of any country out there? Telling the children lies. Getting them to imagine evil things against this book. Anything goes except for the Bible. You get some Bible believer like me walk into a public school, get that man out of here, get him out of here. He's trying to teach morals to our children. He's trying to say, thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and mother. Oh, get him out of here. Oh, let's bring in the woke stuff and lie about history and let's turn people against other races and things like that. How about uh, wireless technologies? There's another good one, a uh, evil imagination. And let's let's get the very high frequencies and and uh, let's do uh, the millimeter wave technology, which is really high powered, but it needs towers pretty close together in order for it to work. And let's get this 5G wireless thing together. 
Let's try it. Ooh, look at all the birds that died. Eh, I don't know. Probably just a coincidence. Let's try it again. Oh, there's other birds and other animals died. Hmm, let's keep trying it. <laughs> Stop. Stop. It doesn't work. You know, there's some re some stuff, studies and things coming out showing that there's a link to cancer. Well, yeah, but it's not definitive yet. And, you know, uh, we've had the cell phone companies and the wireless companies, um, they've actually paid for some of the research, and that research came back that it, there's no relation to cancer. So, yeah, it's called fox guarding the hen house. Unreal. How about mass immigration? Going against what the scriptures say, that God has set boundaries, the bounds of their habitation. Um, God says, hey, let's keep the people separate to keep those people strong so we can have unique ethnicity and appreciate one another and love one another. Oh, no, let's not do that. Let's just blend everybody together and then get them to fight and kill each other and crime goes way up and people are forced to accept cultural traditions that aren't theirs and whatever else. How about autonomous electric vehicles? Number 13 there. I had to write out 13. Number of cursing and things, cursed things in the Bible. But what about autonomous electric vehicles? I mean, does it ever occur to these people, hey, you know, maybe it's not a good idea to get into something that nobody's driving? Um, I remember my father went to an accident uh, when he was in, you know, a uh, EMT with an ambulance, and he said there was this guy, and he was in a van, and he said, not a very smart guy, and he said, uh, he said, I set the, the thing to cruise control, and he said, I went in the back to take a nap, and he said, next thing I know, I went off the road. <laughs> Yeah, cruise controls for the speed, all right? <coughs> but hey, I guess according to the modern world out there, that guy was before his time, you know? <laughs> Setting the cruise control and he just goes back and lays down the things right off the road. But, you know, <clears throat> if it would have been autonomous and he had a GPS hookup and all the other stuff that they put in there, that would have been perfectly fine. <sighs> no, it would not have been. It's insanity. First Timothy chapter 4, let's go there next. But, you know, it, it just amazes me. They come out with this stuff all the time, and I think, where's common sense at here, people? Um, anybody can tell you that this is a bad idea. You know, stop. Stop doing this. It's not going to work. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> says here, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Interesting because Elon Musk actually came out and said a lot of the artificial intelligence stuff is like devils. And the only way to really get that stuff out of there, he said, you kind of need an exorcist. I've played that clip before. I'm not going to play it again. You can look it up. And I have to wonder if a lot of these robots that are coming out and whatever else, I have to wonder if they're just electronic suits for devils. It's devil spirits. Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. A lot of these people, they've seared their conscience with a hot iron. They don't even think about this. There's no more common sense. They just come out with this stuff and they say, we need to have all electrical vehicles by 2050 or whatever it is. I mean, it's not even 2050. I guess now it's 2030 or something like that. We need to be completely green by then. And there are scientists, they come out and they say, uh, excuse me, um, yeah, there's not enough materials to make solar panels for everybody it wouldn't work shut up what are you talking about no we need to have electric vehicles i think that they, yes electric vehicles uh, what about the fact that when these electric vehicles catch on fire um that they you can't actually put them out the fires just continue to burn and they continue to rage and the one car i saw a thing about report about it went to a junkyard and after three weeks it was sitting there and it just <laughs> caught on fire again and these are good for the environment, huh? Uh, oh, and, and uh, where are you getting those metals at to make those batteries? Oh, that's right, from places like around here, natural beauty places where you can bring your mining in and destroy the aquifer in the area and drive people like me out of the natural area where I want to live. That's right. Yeah, you know, destroy the rights of a few for the rights of the many. We all need to be driving Tesla cars, $120,000 Tesla cars. Insane stupidity. And why? Because their conscience has been seared. Every thought of, their, of the imagination of their heart 
goes down is only evil continually. It just gets worse and worse. See, they can't stop. They can't say, wait a second, we're going in the wrong direction. Stop. Stop the craziness here. Stop it. We have to go back and say no to this stuff. They can't do that because they believe in evolution. And evolution says it gets better. So they say, we're failing, and we're failing even worse, and we're failing even worse than those previous failures, but evolution says eventually it gets better. So we'll just keep failing until we'll no longer be failing. It's insanity, but it's what happens when a nation rejects God and when they reject the Bible. Proverbs chapter 28 I mean, I, honestly, I don't know how to get two people any better than what I'm doing. I really don't. I'm trying my very best to get to these people out there that are just so extremely lost. Free videos online, put them out. Anybody can watch them anytime. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26 through 28 says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. And I am so sick and tired of hearing people that profess to be Christians saying, I sure hope that war doesn't come. I sure hope that you know, I don't wish any bad on anybody. It just drives me nuts when I hear people say that. War is a necessary punishment on sinners. There are some people that they're so far gone, they have seared their conscience that the best thing for them is to die and to be put out of their misery and to put other people out of, you know, that misery. If there was war in this country, if there was war in many other countries and there's a lot of people dying from it, all of a sudden people might start to think about God in the Bible again. Oh, but no, brother, we, we have to find some way of you know, calling our senator or congressman and we have to vote the right Republican in or something and then maybe, maybe we can get back to a good thing if we just sit down and just talk out our differences. It doesn't work. It never has and it never will. People get to the point of searing their conscience and God just says, okay, these people need to die. But you get a bunch of wicked, carnal, professing Christians and they're going, oh God, please don't let bad things happen. Oh God, please don't let them happen. Like Abraham did with Lot. Oh, do, please don't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Why not? Abraham knew what was going on down there. Why would he fight against God saying, I'm going to send my angels down there to check it out and see if it's really as bad as everything, and then I'm going to destroy it. And after God says, okay, I'm going to destroy it, Lot's still fighting him. It's insane. It's like a lot of you do out there. Some of you are faithful viewers. You know. You want the judgment. You want this country to be judged. You see the wicked people out there and you say, there's no way to get through to these people. Lord, I pray these people are six feet under pretty soon. Send them down quick into hell, like the Bible says. That'd be the best thing. People start seeing piles of dead bodies. All of a sudden, they'd start to think about death, wouldn't they? I'm not saying to initiate anything or whatever else. I'm not saying to the to brethren, you know, Get your guns together. We're going to march on City Hall. Or no, no, come on. Not doing anything of the kind. But what I'm saying is we need to pray for the Lord's judgment and the Lord's wrath to hit this nation and stop saying stupid statements about, oh, God, please spare America. Oh, God, please don't let bad things happen. Stop doing that. If you profess to be a Christian, then stop asking for God to protect wicked people. Oh, maybe if we just get Trump back in Trump 2024. You know what would happen? More evil, more wickedness. Even if Trump did everything completely righteous and he truly turned America, made America great again, if he did it, what would the people do? The people would use it to sin even more. All the conservatives and everything else, they'd be out there, they'd get drunk more often, they'd be fornicating more often, their language would get filthier, they'd be watching the liberals out in Hollywood that hate them. Every imagination of their thoughts would be only evil continually. Wouldn't it? Yes, it would. And you know it. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 through 11. We'll finish here. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. I've, okay, I missed verse. Okay, one more. Verse 11. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fool. Amen and amen to that. To the word of God. Not to my preaching, but to the word of God. Um, God will search your heart. He knows it's desperately wicked. He knows that you are inclined to evil as a saved man or woman. And he's searching. He's looking at hearts right now. And he's looking, how many hearts are really inclined towards the Lord? How many hearts are really are in line with this book, with wanting to see justice and judgment on all the wicked, perverted things that are going on in this world right now? God wants to find people that are saying, enough, Lord, put an end to this nation. If I have to die as part of this judgment, Lord, if there's nuclear bombs that hit this area and whatever else, so be it. I'll go home to be with you, Lord. Whatever you want to do to stop this evil, it's not going to just calm down and we'll just go back to living. And that's not happening. The evil people in this nation that hate God and hate the Word of God, they are continually imagining new evils and they're just going to make it worse and worse. And it's going to get to the point. It is going to get to the point, brethren, where we will not be able to live anymore in this country. Um, some pervert walks up sometime in a store or whatever else and starts flirting with my son. Um, it's not going to go well with that pervert. Um, a bunch of perverts come and they start to try to burn this place down and whatever else. Not going to go well with them. I'm going to wage warfare against them. Uh, it's just going to be that simple. I have lines in the sand all right, that you don't cross. And if you're a red-blooded man, you have those as well, that you will protect your wife and your children. And um, at the time is coming, we're going to need to stand. Um, it's just that simple. Uh, what's going on in this nation is very evil. It's very wicked. And so I do pray that uh, everybody out there, that you would say, I'm not going to go along with this. Every imagination of the thoughts of their heart is only evil continually. I'm not going along with it. Um, I'm going to do whatever I can to stop the progress of this modern satanic system. I'm going to speak against new versions of scripture. I'm going to speak against contemporary Christian music and modern church worship. I'll be against sexual perversion and artificial intelligence and smartphones. I'm going to be against genetic manipulation of plants and animals, against the wars that they're creating that they, you can't win, um, against Big Pharma, against Hollywood music, Hollywood and music. Um, government indoctrination in the schools, I'm going to get my children out of that. They're not going to be part of that satanic filth. Wireless technology, all this stuff, I'm going to be against that too. 5G destroying God's will or creation and things like that, it's horrible. Mass immigration, I'll speak against it. And autonomous electric vehicles, that whole agenda, the green agenda and whatever else. I'm going to go against it. I'm going to find ways that I can fight this stuff. Wage warfare on the Satan's system. That's how it gets started. Don't wait till they're kicking your door in and saying, time to go off to a camp because you're not like the other people out there. You don't, you know, you're, you look like a man, so that's dangerous. The fact that you have a beard is putting people down, Brian Denlinger. You're, you know, you wear flannel shirts. There's, there's laws against that now because it makes certain people uncomfortable or something. No, no. Uh, you have swords behind you because and that's, that's a... Uh, there are people that are uh, uh, scared by swords, and so therefore you should go to prison or something. No, stop. Stop the wickedness. Stop the madness. I stand by the word of God, and I will not fear what man can do unto me. I won't. Well, the Jesuits, they have you on the list. Good. Put me at the top of it, please. If there's a few more or whatever, I'd like to get to the top. Write me and tell me what I need to do to get to the top of the list. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. The worst, most evil people out there aren't half as powerful as my God, the God of this book right here. Stand, brethren. Stand and fight. We're supposed to be an army. 
Like a mighty army moves the church of God. That's what we used to sing before Satan came along and created the modern churches where now they say, I believe I can fly or something. You know. Get out of that stuff. Get out of your little social club, church buildings, go in there and, oh, hi, brother. Oh, isn't the weather been, weather been pretty lately? Are you going to go fishing? You want to go fishing? Blah, 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 blah. I love your new tie. It's very pretty. We're going to have a, a thing in today, and, and I hope that we don't get into an argument. Oh, what's it about? We have to come up with new church in this, or new carpet in the sanctuary, and, and I just don't want this to be divisive. It, and meanwhile, all that stuff is happening. The evil, they're just like an army growing in power and strength while the church of God is concerned about, you know, if their if their pleat on the front of their pants on their suit is straight or not or something. Uh, personal righteousness, brethren, comes before national righteousness. You get yourself right with God. Um, I am not going to sugarcoat things and make it look good for you and whatever else. I've had to really come face to face with my own sin many times and just say, I need to repent. I'm not right with God. I'm saved, born again. You can be born again and not right with God. Out of fellowship. Uh, there's many times if you're married, you understand that. I'm still married, but I'm not right with my wife right now. I've done things. I've said things. I've... I, yelled at her and I shouldn't have said this and I should and you have to get right well uh, we're the bride of Christ and there's a lot of times uh, God never makes mistakes okay like we do but uh, there's a lot of times we have to examine ourselves and we say you know what I'm not right with God right now I'm being a coward in this area or in that area or whatever else and I need to get right so I pray that you do that please take heed to my words and more importantly, to the words of the King James Bible. That is going to be it. Thank you for watching.